what's going on guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. And in the last video, we talked about confidence and building up your confidence from a reliable source that you can be sure that is there every single time you step on the tennis court. Now today in the video on confidence, we're gonna flip the script on you, right? Pull the rug from under your feet and show you how all that confidence building you were doing was a complete waste of time. Well, kidding, sort of. Right, but we're gonna make the assumption in this video that confidence was a con concept that never really existed in the first place. There's no such thing. It was this creation in your mind. It was a fantasy, right? I've had a bunch of players really come tell me, Coach Steven, I can't play well because I'm not confident. Well, then I asked him, are you doing the right things on the court? Are you hitting your split step on time? Are you hitting the sweet spot? Uh, that prompts a completely new question which makes me think maybe this confidence stuff is all BS in the first place. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. I look forward to rocking into this video with you. Like and subscribe, here we go. So here's my problem. The definition of confidence is certainty of a given outcome. So if you're seeking confidence, it's, a, it's very similar to the, I want to feel good about myself type of attitude. Now, everyone likes to feel good, but that's not the point. That's not the goal. The goal when you play tennis is to get a certain result, regardless of whether you feel good or not. See, a few weeks back, I was working with a student and we were doing side to sides. And I told her, you have to hit 20 cones in 20 minutes and for every additional cone left standing that is extra training and her knee-jerk reaction was like I can't I can't I can't and basically what I said to her was stop talking and do it it doesn't matter I literally just started feeding left right left right left and 20 minutes later she hit 19 cones and then she tells me oh I could have definitely done that see your mind as human beings, what separates us from different animals like cats and dogs is the fact that your mind is a pattern recognition and simulation machine that constantly runs all these scenarios into the future. Some of these scenarios are positive. Some of these scenarios are negative. Sometimes your mind is a tool which can help you tremendously by problem solving, while other times your mind can just be a nuisance creating all this superfluous and petty dialogue and thoughts that actually hurt you. So what I really wanted to say to that student was, look, I don't care what you have to say. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you feel. It is what it is. So look, if you're this feel-good confidence seeker, I'm going to tell you for a moment, look, stop living in your own world of delusion, arbitrary thoughts, chasing the mirage and the fantasy right? If you're looking and seeking good feelings, you're in the wrong sport. Now, I remember this clearly quite a few years back when Jeannie Bouchard, it was a while ago, she got to the semifinals of Wimbledon. It was her breakout tournament. And the interviewer, they asked her a question and she responded something along the lines of, she said, I believe I can win any match against any opponent. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. And technically, yeah, it's not impossible. Anything's possible, right? But if that statement, now actually I like that statement because if it encouraged her, if she believed she had a chance against, a fighting chance against any opponent and it got her to give her absolute best effort until the very last point of every match, that's a good thing. But since she made that statement, uh, her career collapsed, her ranking went way down and plummeted. And so I don't think she was being cocky for cocky's sake. I think that's actually how she truly felt about herself and she's being honest in that moment. The issue is, it doesn't really matter anyways. Nobody cares what you believe. Reality doesn't care what you believe. Reality doesn't care what you feel like in your own body. All reality cares about is what you produce. Do you still get nervous when you get on court? Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, yes, in the first round or second round or third round, and sometimes not in the semis. Uh, you, I can't predict when I'm going to be nervous because mm. sometimes I sleep really well. I wake up and I feel like, wow, today's a great day. I feel good in practice. Next thing you know is I walk on, walk on court and I play uh, really poorly or I'm super nervous or the other way around. You mm. know, it's just like 
I felt horrible all day, but then I play a dream match. So there's no real um, secret to it. I'm gonna give you an example of this. Like, how would you hold serve against a guy like Rafael Nadal? Now, let's be objective here, right? How would you hold serve against him? You need, objectively, to hit the corner of the service box at 130 miles an hour and, and do that at 70% of your first serves, right? Anything short of that, you have zero chance. So you can be brimming with confidence, but if you can't do it, you won't get that result. If, you serve, if you're serving 120 against Nadal and you're not hitting the corner, you're probably not gonna hold serve against him. That's just a fact. And same with anything in tennis. See, if I'm, if I'm playing, what, cre what creates the result? The fact that I hit my split step on time and I met the ball in my strike zone on time and I crushed the ball in my sweet spot. That's what creates the tangible result, right? There's, if I hit my split step late, uh, there's no amount of confidence I can make up for that. I'm gonna have a terrible result. I'm gonna get clobbered. And so the question is how much does confidence really matter compared to something like execution. If you don't execute, see, confidence doesn't produce anything into reality, no matter what you feel inside. Can you be confident playing Federer? I think, yes, yeah, now. I think the first few times you play him, you know, there's still that Federer halo where, you know, you don't really give yourself much of a chance to play him a few times, um, kind of get used to how it is out there, how you know, uncomfortable he makes you feel with his style of play. Uh, your confidence grows, I think, a little more, more and more. Still haven't gotten the win against him, but... Uh... And then you have to contend with the question of how do you actually go about measuring confidence? They all say you can't improve something you can't measure, right? What metric are we using? Like, are you more confident this month than the last month? How do you even know? And, and so you have to ask the question, what does a confident player actually do, like, in the physical universe? Well. This is what a confident player does. They hit their split step on time, they unit turn, they get their feet in position, they swing, they hit the sweet spot. Well, if I'm doing those things A, B, C, and D, am I confident? I don't know. Then you can break it down from a biochemical perspective. Sure, like I'll buy that, right? If you're confident, when you're confident and you have a certain feeling, it releases different chemicals in your brain, right? That make you, and into your body. But at the end of the day, all these chemicals in your brain and your body have to translate to something in the physical universe. So these confident players that we're talking about, what are they doing tangibly? Figure out what are they tangibly doing that you can just emulate, train, discipline, right? For example, right? So you get the same result. For example, you might say a confident player aggressively looks for their shot, right? Instead of being passive, they're just always on the ball. They're just being aggressive. Every single ball, boom, they're on it immediately. So just train your, your first step, train your tracking, train your readiness. And so, boom, every ball you're on it. Whether you're confident or not, you still get the benefits of doing all those things. And then you say, okay, well, confident player, they know how to stay calm in a tight situation in their environment. So the question is, what is staying calm? Well, no, oh, a confident player, so when they breathe, they had to take deep, elongated breaths, like, mm, ah, mm, ah, that's what a confident player looks like in the physical universe when they're confident and calm. Well, just train your breathing so, so it's deep, elongated instead of uh, tight and shallow, right? What a player who, who's facing a lot of anxiety and nervousness would feel. Just train your breathing, ah, uh, and focus on breathing, even if you're nervous, if I'm breathing like, mm, ah, and grunting like that. I'll get the same effect of having deep elongated breaths. At, so even without being confident, I get the same effect as someone, as a confident person doing that same thing. And I've actually experimented with destroying players' confidence on purpose. And here's what I mean. I've told players going, going into the match, right before the match, you're gonna lose. There's, you have no chance in this match. Even if you're up 6-0, 5-0, 40 love, your opponent, he's just toying with you. He's gonna come back and kick your butt, all right? But what I want you to do, or regardless, is give your absolute best effort. Fight hard for every single point. Fight like a wounded animal out there. Give everything you got out there, right? And just play your best tennis. And you know, the funny thing is, the students actually played better and got better result, results because once they were able to drop this whole facade 
of confidence, all this BS and nonsense, they're just focused on producing the highest output. See, at the end of the day, again, to summarize, physics only cares about which force is pushing harder on each other. You have two rams butting heads. The ram that's pushing harder knocks the other one over. So really the question is confidence? Yes or no? Are you, are you confident or are you not confident? Who cares are you, if you're confident? Because at the end of the day, if you do A, B, C, and D, if you perform at a given level, you'll just get the results at a given level regardless of what you feel inside. And it's always like, they're always like, oh, does he have the confidence? Does he feel like he can be, up, be on the court with Rafa? Does he feel like he deserves to be out there with Federer? Well, it doesn't matter. If you hit the corner every single time at 130 miles an hour, it doesn't, you're, you're gonna get that result, right? If you can't do it, you're gonna get obliterated. See, the irony of it all is the more you have to try to be confident, the more it reinforces the fact you're not actually confident. See, if I say, Stephen, 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 be confident, be confident. Was I not confident to begin with in the first place? See, that's exactly what I'm telling myself, right? If I tell you, be respectful, be nice, right? Behave. Right? That, it's essentially saying that you weren't doing those things. So the, again, the more you try, it, it, it's the opposite effect. Actually, co actual confident people don't have to try to be confident. Why? Because they already are confident. And any amount of effort you put into being confident is really a compensation for the fact you weren't confident. Now you might ask the question, what do confident people actually feel like in their own environment? Right? What do they feel like in their body? What, what are they thinking? Let me answer that question for you. Absolutely nothing. They don't feel anything. They feel completely normal. They feel completely comfortable. Because there was never a thought given to confidence in the first place. They never asked, the, oh, am I confident question in the first place? Because they were too busy doing whatever they're doing or being confident. Right? Does a lion ask itself, am I a lion? Oh, am I a lion? Am I a lion? Am I a lion? No, the lion is busy being the lion. It's a lion. Now, I don't know how to necessarily translate this lion-like state to you where this self-doubt doesn't creep in, where you never question yourself. But think of your mind like a computer with an X amount of random access memory with a limited amount of processing power, etc., where you only have so much mental energy you can allocate on so many tasks at once. You have to divide it up, right? So when you think about your mental energy, don't think about winning and what's going to happen from the outcomes of winning. You should be focused, again, not on winning, focused on what it takes to win. And therefore, when you're focused on all the right things, your mind doesn't ask all these stupid, senseless questions that don't help you. Because you're doing, again, everything it takes to win. You only have so much RAM to allocate. And that's how you should be thinking about it. Like when I step on court, I never ask the question, oh, am I confident? Right, because again, 100% of my focus, I'm thinking about it's either two, three, or four things. What does it take for me to win today? Whether it's staying low, whether it's watching the ball, hitting my split step. That's what it takes. And so, even before a match, I'm not like looking at the draw. Am I gonna win? Am I not gonna win? What if, what if it's close? Right, running all these scenarios in my mind. It doesn't help me. I am out there before the match. It's like, just follow your process. Eat, sleep, equipment, hydrate, wake up in the morning, right? dynamic warm-up, stretch, you know, etc. And then I step out on court and I'm, again, my process is the same every single day that I'm out, out there playing. And I have a process specific to me I call my mental keys that I'll say that for a separate video of how I personally go through that. But 
there's zero space allocated for anything else but that. So if you don't exude confidence, if you don't consider yourself a confident person, now what the heck is exuding confidence, right? I don't see anything in the air. If you don't consider yourself a confident person, like from an outsider looking in, whether I would watch myself play or watch you play, to me, not being confident is synonymous for not being focused. If you're not confident, it means you're not focused on the right things, you're getting distracted, you're either, or you get distracted really easily, that's essentially all it is. And so if you train your focus every single day, just laser-like focus, strengthen the, your focus muscle every single day, you, you won't even have to ask the question. So hopefully this video helped you. If, if you were stuck, in, a lot of you guys don't have an issue with this, but I know some, a lot of players out there do. If you were stuck in your head, I hope this video kind of helped kind of, you know, kick you in the butt, right, to get you out of your head into the real world where not all this projected stuff happens, where the real results happen, right? And if you ever have to ask the question, right, when am I confident? You'll know, the, you'll know you're confident when you don't even have to ask the question anymore, when you don't have to reinforce your confidence on a day-to-day -day basis, protect it, build it up. Because it's my belief that true confidence, that real confidence, isn't so easily tampered with. Only fake compensating confidence. So, Thank you guys so much for reaching this far in the video. We have one more on confidence, which we'll, I'll do later this summer. But in order to get to that last video, which I think is the far most important of the three, I had to lay the groundwork with the videos number one and number two. So thanks so much. We'll see you on the next video. Good luck out there playing.